the lorry has reached the end of the road, but then so has the road. This collapse has become a sobering seafront spectacle for the residents of Palu. Today they turned out in force on what's left of their coast road to bear witness to incongruous sights and to the destruction wrought by those two punches from land and sea. But this also kept them outdoors and away from homes either destroyed or not trusted anymore. Rosaline and I are walking on what remains of her six-foot-high garden wall. It was swept away by the tsunami and the house behind it obliterated. I'm heartbroken and have no tears left to cry, she told me, adding she was grateful that her mother and son, the only two at home at the time, are still alive, albeit in hospital. It was here most of the fatalities occurred. People who just fled shaking buildings were stumbling about outside, giving thanks they'd survived the quake when suddenly they were pummeled by the three waves that rolled in. But inland, there were many lethal threats as well. This is the Petubo neighborhood, and it was consumed by a paddy field that the earthquake lifted and moved more than a kilometer. They've laid a path of makeshift duckboards here, but you have to walk carefully, for beneath them the earth is molten. Where on Friday there was life, today there's an eerie quiet, interrupted by corrugated iron creaking in the wind. The people here didn't face a tsunami of seawater, they faced a tsunami of mud. And as you can probably make out, that mud consumed the first floor in both these houses. Rescue teams don't expect to find many survivors here. Neither do they expect to recover many of the bodies buried here. This woman came to see what's left of her house. She wasn't home when disaster struck, but she said her son was, and he's still missing. At one of Palu's main hospitals, 200 patients are spending another night outdoors. The hospital building is unsafe and they don't want to be inside anyway. These people don't want to be in Palu anymore. They're frightened and many spent the day waiting patiently for a flight out of here. Their confidence, like part of their town, has been shattered. John Irvine, ITV News, Palu. Indonesia.